Uh, let me ask you about a competitor and somebody who's become a friend. So Elon Musk and Tesla um, have announced and have been in the early days of building a humanoid robot. How does that um, change the landscape of uh, of your work? So, so there's sort of from the outside perspective, it seems like, well, from a fan as a fan of robotics, it just seems exciting. Right, very exciting. Right when when Elon speaks, people listen, and so uh, it suddenly brought a bright light onto the work that we'd been doing, you know, for over a decade. And um, and I think that's only going to help. And in fact, what we've seen is that uh, in addition to Tesla, uh, we're, we're seeing a proliferation of uh, robotic companies arise mm -hmm. now. Including humanoid? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and um, interestingly, many of them, uh, as they're, you know, raising money, for example, will claim whether or not they have a former Boston Dynamics employee on their staff as a criteria. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a, I, I, I would do that as a company. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So and shows you're legit. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, what? It, it's bring, uh, it has brung a tremendous validation to what we're doing and excitement, uh, competitive juices are flowing, you know, the whole thing. So, uh, it's all good. Elon is also kind of stated that, uh, you know, the, the, maybe he implied that the problem is solvable in the near term, which is a low cost humanoid robot that's able to do, that's a relatively general use case robot. So um, I think Elon is known for sort of setting these kinds of incredibly ambitious goals. Uh, maybe missing deadlines, but actually pushing not just the particular team he leads, but the entire world to like accomplishing those. I mean, do you see do you see Boston Dynamics in the near future being pushed in that kind of way, like this excitement of competition, kind of um, pushing Atlas maybe to uh, do more cool stuff, trying to drive the cost of Atlas down, perhaps, or um, I mean, I guess I, I want to I want to ask if there's some kind of exciting uh, energy in Boston Dynamics uh, due to this a little bit of competition. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, when we released our most recent video of Atlas, mm -hmm. you know, I think you'd seen it: the scaffolding and throwing the box of tools around, and then doing the flip at the end. Yeah, we were trying to show the world that not only can we do this parkour mobility thing, but we can pick up and move heavy things. Because uh, if you're gonna work in a manufacturing environment, that's what you gotta be able to do. And for the reasons I explained to you earlier, it's not trivial to do so. You know, changing the center of mass, uh, uh, you know, by picking up a 50 pound block, you know, for a robot that weighs 150 pounds, that's a lot to accommodate. So we're trying to show that we can do that. And um, it, so it's totally been energizing. You know, we see the next phase of Atlas being uh, more dexterous hands that can manipulate and grab more things, that we're gonna start by moving big things around that are heavy and that uh, affect balance. And why is that? Well, really tiny dexterous things probably are gonna be hard for a while yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe you could go build a, a special purpose robot arm, you know, for for stuffing, you know, chips into electronics boards, but we don't really want to do really fine work like that. I think more coarse work where you're using two hands to pick up and balance an unwieldy thing, maybe in a manufacturing environment, maybe in a construction environment. Those are the things that we think robots are going to be able to do with the level of dexterity that they're going to have in the next few years and that's the that's where we're headed. And and I think and you know, Elon has seen the same thing, right? He's talking about using the robots in a manufacturing environment. We think there's something very interesting there about having a, this a two-armed robot. Because when you have two arms, you can transfer a thing from one hand to the other, you can turn it around, you know, you can you can reorient it in a way that you can't do it if you just have one hand on it. And so there's a lot that extra arm brings to the table. So I think in terms of mission, 
you you mentioned Boston Dynamics really wants to see what are the what's the limits of what's possible, and so the cost comes second, or it's a component. But first, figure out what are the limitations. I think with Elon, he's really driving the cost down. Is there some inspiration, some lessons you see there, um, of the challenge of driving the cost down, especially with Atlas, with a humanoid robot? Well, I think the thing that he's certainly been learning by building car factories is what that looks like yeah. uh, and scaling. Um, by scaling, you can get efficiencies that drive costs down sure. very well. And uh, and the smart thing that you know they have in their favor is that you know they know how to manufacture, they know how to build electric motors, they know how to build uh, you know computers and vision systems. So there's a lot of overlap between modern uh, automotive companies and robots. But hey, we have a modern robotic, I mean, automotive company behind us as well. <laughs> so uh, bring it on. Who's doing pretty well, right? <laughs> the electric vehicles uh, from Hyundai are doing pretty well. 